Mr. Cyril Ryan Lituanias will now introduce the graduate who will give a response. Our graduate response speaker is a Gokongwe Grant Scholar and a graduate of Bachelor of Science and Master of Science in Chemical Engineering, Summa Cum Laude. Throughout his stay in the university, he has pr proudly carried the name of DLSU in multiple local and international events. His research on sustainable materials was awarded the Best Solution Innovation Award in Tokyo, Japan last 2018 and the Magsaysay Future Engineers Technologist Award by DOST last 2020. He was also a full scholar in the short-term programs he attended last 2018 in Harvard University and Kyoto University. Outside academics, he won runner-up in the 18th ASEAN University Network's public speaking contest in Indonesia and was able to represent the Philippines in the Hitachi Young Leaders Initiative 2019 in Singapore and the International Student Week 2019 in Germany. His passion to learn more outside the field of engineering made it possible for him to participate in the PNG CEO Challenge 2018 and the Unilever Business Week 2019. On top of his regular workload, his active involvement in several organizations and community development activities enabled him to be awarded the Gawad Lasaliano 2019 for most outstanding undergraduate student leader and outstanding student leader in social engagement. He was also featured in the Philippine Star and when in Manila for his outstanding accomplishments in the fields of academics and leadership. Currently, he is working as a product supply manager and a process engineer at Procter & Gamble Philippines, where one of his projects was globally recognized through the Global Manufacturing Master's Award. Through his work and achievements, he hopes to serve as an inspiration on being a well-rounded engineering graduate. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our graduate response speaker, Mr. Jaden Zam Doctolero. Thank you, Mr. Lituanas, for that really warm introduction. And thank you as well to the University Honors and Awards Council for giving me this honor to respond on behalf of the graduating class. University President, Brother Bernard Oka FSC, Chairperson of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Nestor Tan, University Provost, Dr. Ro Robert Ruleda, Distinguished Administrators, Faculty and Staff, Parents, Friends, and above all, to you, my fellow graduates, finally, a face-to-face -face good afternoon to all of you. <laughs> After more than a year of patiently waiting, we're finally having our graduation ceremony. And by that, I mean not just the pre-recorded Zoom call last March, but the live one we're having in TICC right now. I mean, the bulk of graduation is being able to wear our togas and marching, right? So I guess the virtual one before doesn't count. Just kidding. <laughs> Jokes aside, we're putting a close to our university lives at a time when many of us have already gotten a taste of what many people like to call the real world. I'm sure we have here those who've already finished their board exams or those who by now are supporting their families and taking on bigger responsibilities as working professionals. We owe it to our Lasallian education for helping us reach this far and for making us the achievers we are today. But what exactly is it from our experience here in DLSU that got us this far? For some, it could simply be that desire to learn or to achieve great things. Hashtag laude before, <coughs> 
For others, it could be passion for their organizations and wanting to make the most out of their university experience, happy Thursdays included. In any case, as I look back on my own experience here in DLSU, the answer came in the form of three Fs. The three Fs of success I learned that got me this far. First is failing forward. During my freshman year, I ran as an independent candidate as president of my batch. Remember that frosh campaigning in purple? Yes, that was me. Then, during my sophomore year, I ran as college president of the Gokongwe College of Engineering. For anyone who ever experienced participating in DLSU's general, general elections, you know that it's not just any decision you can make. The amount of time and effort you have to dedicate for the elections is no joke. And so losing both times was indeed a disheartening experience. But little did I know that that would open up doors of opportunities for me. And so with the extra time that I had, I decided to apply for a short-term program in Japan on my third year just to experience what it's like to be outside the country for the very first time. Fortunately, I got accepted, and my experience there forever changed and redirected my college life. With my performance as a student in Japan, I was again sent by DLSU for a public speaking competition in Indonesia. And it did not stop there. A whole slew of international opportunities came my way so much so that I probably burdened my professors with a pile of excused absence forms. Nonetheless, in each one, I found myself growing and gaining new learnings and experiences that I wouldn't have acquired had I not lost the elections. In other words, failure is not an endpoint, but more of a redirection to something better in store for us. You fail the board exam? Try again. Strengthen on tough subjects, and you may be a top-notcher next year. You fail your job interview? Well, that company may not be the right one for you, and the better fit is just out there waiting. And in each failure, it's important to find that opportunity to improve or learn from our mistakes. That's how we set ourselves up to fail forward. However, in failing forward, it's natural to encounter even bigger barriers. After all, the world we live in can be cruel and unforgiving. Many things are simply beyond our control. And that leads me to my second F, which is forgiving the unforgiving. Around the time I was in high school, we had several financial challenges. My dad got stroke, making it difficult for him to continue his regular work and leaving my OFW mom to support the family. In fact, when I was deciding which school to take for college, I could not choose a school like DLSU if it did not offer a full scholarship. It was simply beyond what we could afford. And that's why instead of resenting our current situation, I learned to accept it and work hard to get scholarships. Eventually, my hard work paid off and I got offered the Gokongwei grants. Without it, I wouldn't be standing here right now. And for that, I offer my sincerest gratitude, not just to the Gokongwei Brothers Foundation, but also to the organizations who helped me complete my high school, bachelor's, and master's on full scholarships. So what does forgiving in an unforgiving world, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So what does forgiving in an unforgiving world really mean? The dictionary defines forgiving as giving up resentment. But more than that, for me, it's channeling your emotions to do something more productive and to control what you can control. Whether it's first focusing on your mental health, especially during this time of pandemic, or using your power to vote to elect better leaders, or planning to achieve something big in the future, like what Mr. Ramon Villavicencio did. In any case, when we choose to be on the forgiving side, our eyes can better see the endless possibilities ahead, empowering us that we do have that capacity to improve our current situation. And on that note, let us not choose to be the unforgiving ones to ourselves. 
We can be our own worst critic, but we need to accept that as humans, it's natural to make mistakes. It's also natural to get tired, stressed, or depressed. So forgive yourself and take that time to pause and refuel. After all, it's hard to struggle to succeed when we are also struggling from within. Ang hirap, di ba? Once you've prepared yourself to fail forward amidst an unforgiving world, that's when you start forging your own future. The third and final F of success I've realized. You know, ever since we started as Frosh here in DLSU, there's a sort of predetermined path laid out for us for some reason. You finish your degree, then take the board exams, then get a job, something like that. As a student, I saw myself in this too, that after graduation, I would take the boards, probably aim to be a top-notcher, have the word engineer before my name, then get a job closely related to chemical engineering. However, in my isolation during the numerous, numerous quarantines we had, I began to realize that this path isn't really for me and maybe I'm meant for something else. I'm sure you guys have had those kinds of thoughts too, whether it's related to your course or maybe your love life. Around that time, I decided that my long-term goal will be to work in a different field and maybe in a different place. And so instead of preparing for the board exams, I was studying something entirely different, something more useful for me in this road less traveled by. On top of that, I got accepted to a job that didn't require me to be a licensed engineer. And that, my friends, is my current picture of success. Does that make me any less of an engineer? Does that make me any less of a Lasallian achiever for God and country? To be honest, I don't think so. My point is, we don't have to be scared of going against the norm just to prove ourselves. We're the ones forging our own future, so we have every reason to define our own version of success. What's important is that our success has a greater meaning to it and is contributing to something bigger than us. We are still Lasallians, after all. But no success story exists without struggles. As St. Catherine of Sayina would say, nothing great is ever achieved without enduring much. I myself once dreamt of graduating with a 3.9 plus GPA. That was my be the Hokage like Naruto dream. Um, I was not as smart and as fast as my peers, and I was not as privileged as you are. I was like Rock Lee from my favorite anime, Naruto, who could not do any ninjutsu at all. But like him, I had to consistently consistently, consistently work hard for six long years. A bachelor student by day and a master student by night. And after enduring that much and everything in between, I finally made it happen. And I believe that you too can realize that future you want to forge as long as you trust in yourselves and remain consistent. Then again, we have to keep in mind that we cannot achieve everything by ourselves. Even reaching this very moment in our lives is something we didn't accomplish on our own. Hence, we have to also keep a heart filled with gratitude. So let's take this opportunity for now to thank the people who helped us reach this far. Our professors who touched our lives and imparted us with the wisdom to succeed in our chosen careers. Our friends, and loved ones who we could lean on during hell weeks and heartbreaks. The administrators and staff for making our university a comfortable place to learn. The institutions who continue to make Lasallian education more accessible to all. Our parents who made unimaginable sacrifices just so that we could study in a prestigious university. And to God who gave us the strength to move forward despite all odds to everyone who has made an impact on our lives, thank you. Fellow graduates, the road ahead is indeed unprecedented and unforgiving. But we're here today with our heads held up high, 
ready to face on even bigger challenges and to make our impact in our own respective fields. We will definitely stumble along the way, but we will fail forward and learn from our experiences. Yes, we will struggle to succeed, but we will forgive our shortcomings and find new ways of doing things. In so doing, we can forge a future where we can take pride on our own successes. Guided by our Lasallian values and virtues, we can also build a future where everyone, every Filipino can dream of success in the same position we are in now. It's simply a question of how willing we are to use what we have to make conditions better for others and to provide them with opportunities that they alone cannot access. I look forward to that future we can build together. A future that truly begins here. The Stalian achievers of the 190th batch, congratulations. From here onwards, let your arrows fly high, archers. Thank you and animo lasal. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Lero.